Good morning, and welcome to the DFS Army YouTube channel. I am Razzle11, and you can find me on Twitter at Razzle11Grinds. I'm going to take a look at some pitching for today, uh, the 28th of July. Uh, we have a, I believe it's a 14-game main slate. Got 14 games on a Friday. Um, pretty normal. Uh, the Detroit Miami series starts, and that game starts before the main slate, all of 25 minutes. Um, I, whatever. I hate 5:40 Central time start, but uh, that's their choice. So um, we're gonna dig in weather-wise. Um, some rain in Atlanta, maybe St. Louis, uh, potentially Colorado and Baltimore, but uh, nothing looks too terrible right now. Uh, we'll just pay attention as the day goes on. Uh, a bunch of locations, super hot weather. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight games with 88 degree plus weather all the way up to 98 degrees in Kansas City. Uh, so there's some pretty solid hitting environments. Uh, Kansas City, 98 degrees and expected winds out to left at 14 miles an hour. St. Louis, 96 degrees with winds out to left at 15. Uh, so there's some, some great hitting weather in the Midwest. Um, so let's dig in. My first look here initially pitching-wise, uh, there is a lot of names it is going to be really difficult to to limit my pool to eight guys uh, on this 14-game slate, but I'm going to do my best to pinpoint some guys I prefer over the others. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Garrett Cole at the top. The Yankees are a minus-125 favorite. Game total of 8.5 against Baltimore. Cole... Has not been good against Baltimore this year. Obviously, just one start, but um, it's a pretty telling start. The nice thing to see in on the road is just three home runs allowed in 48 and two-thirds innings. Uh, the big difference compared to his home numbers. Um, I think he's a sneaky option for us. I, I don't think people are going to want to pay 11K for him against Baltimore. Uh, his double-digit strikeouts in each of his last two starts. Uh, getting an extra day of rest yet again. Uh, they've kind of been able to stretch him out, um, get him some additional rest uh, over his last few starts, which I think is going to come in handy in the second half for a guy like Garrett Cole. So I am intrigued just because I, I feel like he's not going to be overly popular on this slate. Not that I think anybody's going to be super chalky, uh, because of the names that we have available to use on this slate. Uh, Kevin Gossman, a minus 205 home favorite. He has been at his best when at home. Uh, his K rate is absolutely ridiculous at home. Uh, allowing a home run just every 12 innings or so, uh, which is great to see. Did allow four home runs his last start against Seattle, which is kind of... Out of nowhere, uh, still went for 20-plus DK points. Hasn't been as dominant, I guess, over the last month and a half or so. Um, but he's still capable of just racking up strikeouts. Uh, the Angels have guys that will strike out. Uh, if he avoids Otani, uh, big if at this point, it seems like. Uh, I think he has a route to uh, an excellent performance. And he might be my favorite spend-up pitcher for GPP purposes at this point. Uh, McClanahan has not been as strong on the road. Uh, has had some hiccups recently, uh, dealing with some back issues, etc. He is going to be somebody I fade, which is really uh, tough for me to say because I am a huge McClanahan fan. Uh, I think his long-term upside is just through the roof. Uh, but I just don't like the way that he's thrown. Uh, Houston's been playing better. Uh, Alvarez is back as well. So uh, they're kind of getting to be full health. I think Altuve is back. So 
I'm going to fade McClanahan on the road against Houston. Uh, looking at the Vegas numbers, it is a pick em. Um Eight and a half total, low enough, but uh, I do have to make some decisions here at the top, so McClanahan is going to be the one guy that I for sure leave out at this point. Logan Webb at home, uh, different pitcher when he's at home. Uh, great ballpark, coming off an atrocious start against Washington. Uh, decent bounce back spot. Uh, Boston is is full of left-handed hitters, etc. So uh, I'd like to see him look into his splits even more. But he's a minus one forty-five favorite in a game with a seven and a half total. Uh, seven and a half is going to be the lowest on the main slate by a full or um, not quite a full run. Uh, San Diego game does have an eight total, but um, but anyways, there, you know, like we mentioned with the weather, there's a ton of great hitting spots. This is one that wouldn't be, uh, you know, San Francisco is the, the toughest park for hitters um, from a power standpoint. So I think Logan Webb is a perfectly fine option. So he will make my spend up pool uh, on this slate. Zach Wheeler, a minus 160 favorite against the Pirates. Pirates offense has been super cold overall. Wheeler is so hit or miss. Um, does give up some runs, can strike out a bunch, 20-plus DK points. Uh, great price point compared to some of the other guys. I'm going to go with Wheeler tonight. Uh, you know what? It's using four out of the five spend-up guys here. Uh, makes it a little rough, but I, I like the matchup too much to pass on him. Uh, Musgrove, I don't think I'm going to Musgrove, even though he is a minus-165 favorite in a game with just an eight total against Texas. Uh, it's kind of shocking. Uh, we know how dangerous this Texas offense actually is. Uh, Musgrove has been at his best win at home overall, but I think he's just going to fall into the fake. I don't feel comfortable doing it, but I do have to make some decisions. And I think I am going to fade Musgrove. Um, if I was fading Wheeler, I'd probably use Musgrove. You know, so I, th I think you can kind of decide one or one or the other in this range. Uh, I am going to go with Wheeler over Musgrove. Um, I think his individual matchup is just more inviting for us for fantasy purposes. Uh, Keller against Philly. I don't think I'm going to go with Mitch Keller. Uh, his recent starts have not been good. Dominating the tough Arizona squad, but the last two haven't been good. Uh Walks are randomly jumping up. Some strikeouts disappear. I'm going to end up passing on Mitch Keller here at 9,600. I just don't I don't feel super confident in it. And obviously, I think we can match whatever. Even if he has a strong game, I think we match it with a lot of guys up here. So I don't feel terrible about missing out on a, you know, a 22 DK point performance from Mitch Keller. Max Scherzer. Was strong against Washington. The first time he faced him, he's been spectacular pitching at home uh, for the Mets. Coming off of a terrible start against Boston, uh, but as you see, all these bad starts have been on the road. You know, sandwiched around some great starts at home, even against the Dodgers. I am more intrigued about Scherzer than I would be about Keller. Scherzer is a minus one ninety five favorite. So I'm very interested uh, <clears throat> in Scherzer at this point. Normally, I would be very interested in Sonny Gray. He's absolutely dominated Kansas City. Uh, he's not as elite at on the road. Recent starts haven't been great. K's have been down. Walks have been up. And then, like I mentioned in the beginning, uh, the weather in Kansas City is just absolutely perfect for hitting with some wind blowing out. Uh Feels weird, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up fading Sonny Gray. I don't love it because I love taking pitching against Kansas City, but just the environment and everything, I think we can pass on him um, and use Scherzer over him at this point. No clue why Curry's 9K uh, for a guy that's going to throw just a few innings, probably. Uh, Logan Gilbert against Arizona, I'm not really interested. He has been better on the road. Uh, he's coming off a rough start against Toronto. Has some pretty strong upside, but I don't think I want to go 
on the road against the D-backs and take him. He's a minus-135 favorite, but the game does have a 9 total. Christian Javier at home. Definitely been a bit different pitcher when at home. But his, his walks are, have been an issue at times. I am going to leave him on the outside looking in for now. Uh, <clears throat> dig into the Rays' performances against him. I know the current version of the Rays' lineups has been struggling. Um, but that's one matchup I want to break down a little bit more for myself before I make a, a decision. Uh, right now, I would guess that he's on the outside looking in, but uh, he's definitely in consideration. Not interested in Jordan Montgomery. The Cubs have done a ton of damage to him. Uh, and he's coming off of a terrible start against this Cubs team. Uh, and like I mentioned earlier, it's in the 90s with some wind blowing out in St. Louis. I'm going to say no thank you to that one. Bobby Miller against Cincinnati. I am interested. He's a minus 240 favorite. But the game total is approaching 10 right now. He hasn't been as good at home. But I do have some interest even against Cincinnati. But right now I would kind of put him with Christian Javier. Uh, most likely on the outside looking in. Kenzie Gore has made two starts against the Mets and dominated them. Uh, his K upside on the road has been through the roof, which is great. Whip his way down. Uh, the average against his way down. But somehow his ERA is up. So it, that kind of tells me he's been getting a little unlucky on the road. Uh, I am interested, even though his last couple road starts have been pretty bad. Uh, he's coming off of a great start against San Francisco. The Mets offense has been pretty dormant. Uh, they struggled last night against Josiah Gray. I think Mackenzie Gore has more upside than Josiah Gray. Maybe a little more volatile, but I am very interested in him at 7,300 for that upside. Uh, Tommy Henry, no thanks. Chiros. Man, I, I'll be honest. As a Twins fan, I was hoping that he would somehow end up with Minnesota uh, when he was sent on waivers. Uh, just because the, the Twins kind of need some long help in the bullpen. And I think Chernos is better than what some of his numbers have shown. Uh, as you know, I'm not a huge fan of the Milwaukee offense. So I'm very interested in Chernos, but I may not use him. He just doesn't have a ton of K upside despite having some nasty stuff on the mound. He's one of those guys that, you know, he's similar to like Dustin May where you, or Bruce Dahl greater all. You see him with the massive movement and, you know, 98 plus. And you wonder why they just don't pick up strikeouts. They just, they allow too much contact for their stuff. But uh, Cutter Crawford, pitching in San Francisco, I'm intrigued. Uh, sm low game total. I do worry about him against some of the San Francisco hitters. So I want to dig into some splits for both sides. But I am interested in this ballpark. Uh, so Cutter Crawford, intriguing. You know, he went into Wrigley and absolutely dominated the Cubs. 32 DK points. Uh, his best performance by far. He does have multiple 20-plus performances, so he does have enough upside uh, for us in our build. So uh, right now he's probably my favorite spend-down option on this slate. Uh, no thank you to Singer. Gray Rod. Maybe. Um... God, he's been so bad in Baltimore. He was solid against Tampa Bay. Looked really good against the Dodgers and then fell apart in the sixth, I think it was. Um, we know the Yankees lineups have struggled, so maybe Rodriguez might just have a huge ceiling, uh, but be super volatile. So I don't mind mixing him into your pool. But uh, no real interest in anybody down here uh, at this point based on matchups, etc. So... There we have it. There's that first look. If you enjoy what I bring to you, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, turn the notification bell, and get the alert anytime we drop videos. If you want to join us and at DFS Army, get access to everything, I'll put links in the description below. You can use promo code RAZ, that's R-A-Z, for 10% off monthly. And as always, best of luck, everybody.